So we're going to do uh, improper integrals this week. Maybe we'll do a little probability too. I don't know. We'd have had plenty of time for probability if the weather had been different. But um, let me make the observation that some real world functions have vertical asymptotes. And probably the easiest example to give is from a business. That's that C of X be the cost to manufacture X units of something. So C of X can be kind of um, a deceptive function. Like maybe C of X is 10,000 plus 0 0.2 so maybe C of X is linear. And in this situation, this 10,000 is a startup cost. Um, even if we've manufactured no units yet, we have to rent equipment and hire people and so on. This is 0 0.2 is the cost per unit. So this C of X, as I say, risks being kind of deceptive. Like C of one is 10,000.2. And it's a literally true statement to um, manufacture one unit costs $10,000.2, but it makes these units sound much more expensive to manufacture than they are, than they actually are. So, <laughs> What we sometimes use instead is the average cost function. It gets its own bit of notation, which you don't have to memorize, but it's a C with a bar over it. And the average cost function is C of X divided by X. So going back to this example, the average cost function is 10,000 plus 0 0.2x all divided by x. Let's take a look at this curve. Get 
the Desmos before I share anything. So 10,000 plus 0.2x divided by x. And we can't see anything because of our window. But if we let y go up to maybe 50,000 and x can go up as well, so here's what the average cost looks like. If we're just manufacturing a few elements, like if we're just manufacturing five items, the average cost is quite big because we have, I mean, this 10,000 divided by five essentially. So the average cost is about 2,000. But as the number of items we manufacture increases, let me let X be a little bigger than this. Maybe X can go up to 1,200. As the number of items we manufacture increases, the average cost goes down. And I mean, what's happening is that this 10,000 is ultimately being made kind of irrelevant. Like by the time we've manufactured a billion items and this factory has been running for decades, well, we won't manufacture a billion items, but you know what I mean. By the time this factory has been manufacturing for decades, this 10,000 is going to be pretty much irrelevant. Like by the time we've manufactured 810,000, the average cost is 0.212. And what's happening here is that the average cost is approaching the cost per unit. Well, what's really relevant at the moment from this example is uh, that this function has a vertical asymptote. It's not defined at zero. The closer we get to zero, the greater y becomes. Let's tie this into integration. What's this have to do with what we've been doing in this class? Well, all the integration we've done has been with functions that have been continuous on the interval from A to B. So we've been looking at the integral from A to B when we've had definite integrals of f of x dx. And we've always looked at situations where the function was continuous on that interval. Um, 
So like when we were looking at rational functions, I never explicitly mentioned this, but I was very careful in the homework with and the quizzes with our limits of integration that if the rational functions had any vertical asymptotes, they weren't between A and B. So all of this stuff we've done with the fundamental theorem of calculus, even with numerical integration, like the trapezoidal rule and stuff, it's all been in reference to these continuous functions. Which means that if you want to integrate, say from zero, to 10,000, this average cost function then you have a problem um, because this integral is not, or this function, I guess I should say, is not defined at one of the limits of integration. It's got a vertical asymptote at zero. <clears throat> so what does this mean? Do we just, do we have to give up? Or, I mean, if we had to give up, this section would be like one page long. So presumably we're going to try to work around this. We're going to try to learn to integrate a function like this that has a vertical asymptote at one of the limits of integration. And we'll do other stuff too. We'll ask what happens, what happens if there's a vertical asymptote between the limits of integration? Like this function has a vertical asymptote at a hundred. It's between zero and 10,000. But let's start with this situation where we have a vertical asymptote at one of the limits of integration. And we can start it really is going to be done the same no matter where the vertical asymptote is, whether it's at A or whether it's at B. But Let's say we have a vertical asymptote at A. I'm going to just put the formula on the board for you, and then I'll discuss it, and we'll sort of try to get a handle on it. But in situations like this, first of all, there is a name for this situation. This integral is called improper. Improper. Who appears for three? Looking at that, and uh, no, this is correct. And in this situation where the vertical asymptote is at that lower limit of integration, 
This is going to be the limit of an integral. It's going to be the limit as, ooh, I don't want to use x. We've already used x. Let's use the limit as capital N approaches A from the right. There's some notation we haven't used in months, but the limit as N approaches A from the right of the integral from A. This is my day for these little typos. The integral from N to B. Come on, Zoom. F of X, BX. And this should make perfect sense if we just give it a little thought. Let's go over. We grab this chair. My knee is hard. And let's go back to Desmos. And let's, let, let's look at the specific situation we've got on this range. So we're looking at X between a zero and 10,000. And let me go here and let me let X go up to 10,000 and down to zero, and Y can go from zero to, oh, to something less than this, because we can't see anything on this graph. Let's let Y, come on. Desmos, don't just change stuff without my permission. Okay, so here we are. Now, remember what the definite integral of a positive function is. The definite integral of a positive function is an area. So in particular, if Desmos is going to cooperate with me, Desmos hates this. Okay, maybe Desmos isn't gonna be the way we do this, but we're looking at the area under this curve, I think. Yeah. I just needed to type in the right thing. So if this integral exists, it's the area of this region. And you'll notice I used the phrase, if this integral exists. And it's not at all obvious that this region has a finite area, right? because this region goes up infinitely far. It never stops going up. So we have this infinite region. The integral, if it exists, is the area of an infinite region. Not at all clear that a region that goes up to infinity should have a finite area. But, who made a rod for my own back going up that far? Here we go. But let's not worry about that for this second. Let's just look, um, consider the definition we gave. 
What if instead of integrating from zero to 10,000, we integrated from 100 to 10,000? then all of the stuff I was just saying no longer applies. We've got this finite region. It definitely has an area. This integral exists. And in fact, we can find it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. What if we let X go from 10 to 1,000. Well, suddenly this region, if I keep zooming up, this region is going to become invisible, but this region is extending much further up. It's extending up off the screen, but it's still got the maximum value. If I mess around with Y, add another zero. Here we are. We've got this finite region. It's got a finite area. There aren't any problems with this integral. What if I go from a one? Ten thousand. Did not mean to press that button. Thank you, Desmos. But if we go from one to ten thousand, let me that why. Be bigger, there we go. We've still got, you might not really be able to see this in the back of the room, maybe something like, no, I don't think it really matters what color I pick. It's just, but maybe you can see this region. Yeah, maybe it's a little more visible now that I've clicked it. There's this region, it goes up here, then it goes down, then it goes up here. So it's a finite region, it has an area, we can find it, there's no problem. So as we let this lower limit of integration, get closer and closer to zero, we get these finite regions with finite areas. This integral from point to zero, one to 10,000 is no issue. This integral from point to zero, zero, one to 10,000 is no issue. So presumably, as this lower limit of integration is getting closer and closer to zero, these integrals we're finding are getting closer and closer to this integral. At least that's the theory, and that's the logic behind this definition. And let me say up front, I sort of touched on this already, but an improper integral might not exist. I mean, when you have an improper integral, you're looking at the area of an infinite region. That's kind of a weird thing to talk about, actually. Maybe rather than being surprising, that an improper integral might not exist. 
It's more surprising if an improper integral ever does exist. If we really can have infinite regions with finite areas. Let's take, uh, does anybody have any questions? Then let's take this definition and let's apply it to this example and let's see what happens. If we can make this work, if the integral exists, if the integral doesn't exist, an integral from zero to 10,000. Feel like maybe I shouldn't have used 10,000 twice, but I won't change it now of this fraction. So we've done so much integration um, at this point that maybe there is a temptation to look at that integral and overcomplicate it. Like, is this U substitution or is it partial fractions? I mean, it is a fraction or something like that. But this integral can be computed without any special techniques, just using material from way back in calculus one, if we break it up, it's 10,000 over X plus 0 0.2 X divided by X. And in that second expression, those X's cancel. And we're left with 0 0.2. And this is an antiderivative we can take. Um, the antiderivative of 10,000 over X is a natural logarithm. The antiderivative of a constant is the constant times. So we don't need any fancy techniques here. What we do need is to convert this into a limit. And I mean, I do feel like it is sort of frustrating. We do limits way back in like the first month of this one. And, and then we sort of never touched them again. And now we're suddenly taking limits again, but not n to a thousand. I am letting n go to this lower, limit of integration. I'm letting n go to zero. So the limit as n goes to zero of the integral from n to 10,000, 10,000 divided by x plus 0 0.2, and this is now going to be a fundamental theorem of calculus problem with a limit tacked on at the end. Finding that integral is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's just do that. Let's not worry about this limit the moment. Let's look at the integral from n to 10,000 
10,000 plus 0 0.2x. Wait, 10,000 divided by x. We already wrote this. Plus you plus 0 0.2 dx. So that's a natural logarithm. We don't need the absolute values because everything's positive here. X is going between zero and 10,000. So 10,000 ln X plus 0 0.2 X. And we're going from N to 10,000. Let's see. And let's get our calculator up. It always lags just a little. Or maybe it lags a lot, but here we go. So plug in that upper limit of integration. 10,000 times the natural log of 10,000 plus 0.2. Times 10,000, we get some largest number, 94,103 point, and then some stuff. Let me not worry about the decimal. That's about 94,103. And then we plug in N for the lower limit of integration. And let me, this is going to kind of run in. Let me silo this off. 10,000 times the natural log of N plus 0 0.2 times N. So this is the integral from N to 10,000. Um, and assuming that N is a positive number, assuming that N is not to zero, there is no problem with this integral. If N is like a hundred, well, you can take the natural log of a hundred, you can take 0.2 times a hundred, everything is fine. If N were zero, this wouldn't be defined because you can't take the natural log of zero. What we're taking is the limit as n approaches zero of this expression. And as far as taking 
this limit. I mean, it might be easiest to do it just looking at a graph. As n approaches zero, point two times n approaches zero. That's that's fine. Um, take this limit, and this is why I say it might be best to look at a graph. We really have to remember what the natural log is doing as n goes to zero. We have to remember that the natural log is going to negative infinity. So we have some number here, 94,103 plus 10,000 times infinity plus zero. And this works in what I hope is the intuitive way. 10,000 plus infinity is infinity. Infinity plus 94,000, still infinity. So this limit is infinite. And in particular, this limit does not exist. So going back to what I said earlier, to what I said on this frame, that an integral of this form might not be defined, this integral is not Defined. And again, I, th I think this should be kind of intuitive in a way. I mean, we have this region, and this region is very thin, but it's going all the way up to infinity. It's not really surprising that it doesn't have a finite area. Let me give you a bit of terminology. If we have an improper integral and we take the limit and the limit doesn't exist, We say that the integral diverges. So we have time, there are 10 minutes left. I'll, I'll just do another example. We'll have you work examples tomorrow, but you have 10 minutes left, we've got to be quick. I've said that it makes sense that this integral doesn't exist because, because it's this sort of infinite region. And why would an infinite region have a finite area? Natural next question, can I put an integral on the board such that this such that it's an improper integral and it does exist. I sure can. The integral from zero to one of one divided by the square root of x dx. Just like the last example, 
This integral has a vertical asymptote at that lower limit of integration, a vertical asymptote at one. At zero, sorry. One divided by the square root of x, we're going from zero to one. Let me, the time I've finished messing around in Desmos, we may not have time to actually take the integral. That's fine. We can do it tomorrow if that happens. That's that why not get quite so big. This most is not cooperating at all with me. Although in fairness, I think that's because I'm trying to mess around with it when I can barely see the screen. There we go. So here's our curve. It looks very similar to the last curve we looked at. It has a vertical asymptote here. It then sort of plunges downwards and approaches a finite number. And if we look at this integral, it's therefore the area of an infinite region. This region goes up infinitely far. This integral is its area. But can an infinite region have a finite area? Now let's look at the limit as n goes to zero of the integral from n to one. Let me just for my own for simplicity, let me rewrite one over the square root of x as x to the negative one. If I can never take that integral if I don't rewrite it first. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity. So this is x to the one half times two. And we're evaluating it from n to one. So that's the limit as n goes to zero of two minus two times the square root of n. So that's two minus twice the square root of zero, which is two. So we take this limit and we're looking at the area of an infinite region, but this time that area somehow exists and we found it and it's just true. So these improper integrals might exist. They might converge, we say. or they might not exist. They might diverge. It all depends on 
the specific integral in question. We're not even, we're not uh, partic done with this section or even particularly close to being done with this section, but there won't be time to do another example. I'll call this here. We'll pick up 